Hi ladies, how are you all doing? It's Andrea here. If anyone else is new to my videos and doesn't know me, I'm Andrea, I'm a nutritional therapist and I help and, help and support women in perimenopause and menopause to um, help them with their hormone symptoms um, so they can create solutions to the symptoms and create a healthy life. And if you're coming on, say hello. Um, anybody um, watching the replay, say you've watched the replay. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel and click that bell um, when I post more videos. And today I want to talk to you about ovarian cysts. What can be happening? And this is quite a debilitating condition for lots of women, especially if you're trying to get pregnant. Um, it's, it can cause a lot of infertility. Um, and then you go to your doctors and because you can't get pregnant or you, you're just really struggling to carry a baby, you're having a miscarriage. Um, it it's, can cause a lot of heartbreak. Um, and I think a lot of women are prescribed the birth control pill to help with this, to help regulate your hormones. And you could also have um, be, be sent to a, a specialist, an infertility specialist, and they might, they might even consider IVF as well. Um, but you can heal from this. There is so much that you can do to heal your body from ovarian cysts. From the most common one is PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, this is uh, becoming a lot more um, common now. And so there are, yeah, there are different types of, of cysts and your body can clear them. They can get rid of them. They can heal them naturally. And sometimes you just don't know that they're there. You can have some cysts that you don't know that they're there. You could have what's called a corpus luteum um, cyst, where your after ovulation, your the follicle should shrink, and some fluid could get stuck inside that, and that could create the cyst. Um, you can have endometrium endometrium um, cysts formed as well with endometriosis. Um, but the main one um, that a lot of women struggle with is PCOS, and. This is because um, of your follicles. What can happen with PCOS is your follicles are not being produced correctly. Um, they're not being prepared correctly. And there could be a breakdown in the communication between your brain, your pituitary gland and your brain. It's the master commander. It's like called the HPA axis. It's gone a bit wonky. It's gone out of whack for some reason. Um, it's like a radio frequency, you know, if you haven't tuned into that right correct station, it's muffled, you can't hear it very well, can you? It's like that in your body, it's like your body's not communicating with your ovaries correctly. It's sending out the signal, it's causing your luteinizing hormone to go high when it should be at lower levels. In your follicle stimulating hormone is, is what can go lower because of this high luteinizing hormone. Because your follicle stimulating hormone is produced to help your follicles mature to grow into an egg for your ovulation. So if you've got high luteinizing hormone, your FSH is not going to be high, it's going to be really low and it's going to affect your estradiol, your estrogen levels. So your estrogen level is going to be low. So your body's going to have a, your ovary is going to have a hard time to mature that egg and ovulate for you to ovulate as well because you need that follicle stimulating hormone to be at higher levels than luteinizing hormone in your first part of your cycle. That's what it should be. And then luteinizing hormone surges before you ovulate and this is what causes the rupture and your egg, um, your egg is released. And then you have the corpus luteum, the pop-up shop to produce your progesterone in your second phase. And you have what's called aromatization that happens um, aromatization is when tes your testosterone converts to estradiol, which is estrogen. And, and this is what can be low for a lot of women with PCOS. This aromatization is not happening. You've got low aromatization because of the high luteinizing hormone. And this is what's causing a lot of the problems and it can create the cysts um, around that because when you're not ovulating, this is how the fluid can build up and the cyst can be created because you're not ovulating. It's not 
um, because you don't have that follicles not mature the egg is not matured because of the low estrogen because of the high luteinizing hormone now, i hope that explained it for you if you understood that let me know in the comments if you understood that and you um you understand what is happening in pcos and what is going on with your follicle and your egg production and why it's so hard to maintain a pregnancy hard to get pregnant when you're not always ovulating all the time and your, your follicles um, your eggs you just accumulate and accumulate and it can create the cysts um, because a lot of things can happen because of this um, let's have a look now at what can be causing this scatter communication what can be going on a lot of this communication breakdown can start in utero it can start in your mother's womb when you're when you were a baby how your mother was um, exposed to toxins, to how your body was, um, your cells in your body were created. You have alpha and beta cells for your estrogen all over your body, in your ovaries and all over your body. And that can affect how you've grown up to puberty, how you've lived through your teenage years. Were you exposed to lots of toxins? Were you um, not eating a, a, a good diet, not, not nutrition? Nutrition was affected. Um, because that plays a massive part in, in your development because your beta and alpha beta cells in your body could have got damaged during this, during your uh, fertile years, during your puberty. Um, and over the you know, your early 20s and your 30s, these lots of things can interfere with that, especially toxins. There's toxins everywhere. And the more toxins that you're exposed to, the more that your, your alpha beta cells in your body can get rusty over time. I like if you think of something that's you're grabbing hold of something and it's gone slimy and you can't grab onto it because it's got it's too slippy. Or if you look into a mirror and you can't see it because it's all dull, you can't see yourself very well. So you have to give it a clean, give it a buff up. This is what happens with alpha, alpha beta cells in your body. They can go, you just your body can't your, your hormones can't latch onto them because they've gone rusty, they've gone, they need a bit of polish, they need to be polished up. So your hormones can go, oh, yeah, I can latch onto that now. I can hold on to it because it's all cleaned. They can, because of the mimic, you can get mimics of estrogens in your body. And it can be caused from, um, foods can be toxic if you've got lots of pesticides on them. If you're eating your fruits and vegetables and things like that, and you've not cleaned them properly. You can have, have artificial things in your foods, like processed foods can have toxins in them. So it's not just about environmental toxins, the air that you breathe the fumes of from cars and things like that, which you can't control the environmental toxins. You've got blue light now, we've got EMFs, we've got mobile phones. We, all of this is toxic to our body and um, can be affecting all the different cells in your body. And it can be affecting your ovulation, it can be affecting your health. So this is something to look at here, is the, uh, with regard to the, the, the breakdown of communication and the excess estrogens in your body that's mimicking your estrogen, you can have bad estrogens. It's keeping your human estrogen low and not producing your estrogens very well. It can also be due to insulin resistance because insulin resistance can, can keep your testosterone levels high. It can stop this aromatase from happening as well. Um, so it's looking at that as well, if insulin resistance, are you eating lots of sugary foods? Um, because this is what happened to me. I was eating, I was a sugar junkie, and I was eating lots of um, foods and I had insulin resistance. Um, so it's, it, that might be a problem for you that's creating this. There could be um, your gut health because you, you have what's called a strobilum in your gut, which um, really plays a big part with estrogens and how the, your estrogens are processed in your body um, and the, the, ex, the toxic estrogens um, because you have what's called beta glucuronidase, which is an enzyme that can grow out of control in your gut if you don't have a healthy microbiome, healthy gut bacteria, you know, you have more bad bacteria in there. The beta glucuronidase can be um, increased and that can flip over the estrogens, which are supposed to be deactivated. So when your hormones have been used in your body, they get deactivated and then um, they're taken out through your liver, through the phases of your liver detox. And this beta glucuronidase, glucuronidase is quite nasty Little, little thing, it can flip that estrogen back into active again when you don't want it to be active, you want to get it out of your body and it can recirculate back in your body and that can be toxic and create lots of problems as well with um, your periods and 
um, your estrogen levels. Your liver detox is a big one, how your, you have two phases, well, there's, there's more than two phases because you have the elimination phase, but you have the two phases of the detox and the pathways to that. You can have different pathways that your um, estrogens go down, your hormones go down when they're exited out of your body. You have what's called the um, hydroxy pathways. You've got number two, number four, number 16 hydroxy pathways. I call them highways. Number two is the healthy pathway that you want to go down. Your body wants to choose that pathway to get everything out, get the toxins out. You can the, you have the hydroxy four or the number 16. And I think the hydroxy four is the one that can be the prob problematic one with regards to um, developing cancer, um, estrog estrogenic cancers. And then the, the, the hydroxy 16 one is, is, not, is not a very good one either. Um, so the liver detox plays a massive part within this as well and your gut health and what you're eating, your insulin resistance, how you're feeding your body and your nutrition can really help increase this aromatase, lower these estrogen levels, lower the insulin levels. So that's what we want to try and look at is deal with your insulin resistance, take a look at your liver detox, how your gut health is, getting that healthy to create um, a healthier estrogen and decrease your estrogen levels um, and then your adrenal glands they play a massive part as well with your hormones and how they're regulated and so if, if they're not talking together then your, your thyroid is involved as well so it's like yeah, your thyroid pituitary gland and your adrenal glands all play a part with communicating with one another and so when you can when you can look at your gut health strong deal with your insulin resistance Get your liver to be detoxing properly. Make sure that you poop in right every day, at least once a day, twice a day would be better. Um, this can all help with your body regulating itself out again. This communication working correctly again, stopping the high luteinizing hormones, helping your body to ovulate properly again and, re and, and heal these cysts, the cysts that are being created. So there's so much that you can do to help with this. Um, this is what I help women with, with all the time, help them to look at why they're having struggles with not just PCOS, but lots of other hormone struggles. Because um, all this plays a part in lots of different symptoms that you're going through in perimenopause and midlife as well. Um, a lot of these things I just spoke about, your insulin resistance, your gut health, your liver health, they do play a big part in, and you talk the toxins, you know, the toxins that are a big, massive part in how your body is working. And it's like your body's in a bit of a fog. I like to think of it like it's, you can't see properly, can you, when you're in a fog? Your hormones can't figure out where to go, what, what to do, what the, whether they're all confused, what they're doing. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so this can cause problems with thyroid working properly because you've got high estrogen levels, the, the ex toxic estrogens combined with your thyroid hormone and that's gonna affect everything. Um, so it's looking at getting, eating, looking at your nutrition, starting there with your nutrition and, and reducing your stress levels because stress can really put your hormones out of whack even more because stress prioritizes looking, taking care of you and saving your life. It doesn't prioritize your, your fertility. It doesn't prioritize making your hormones. And like I talked about, there's lots of different kinds of stressors in your life, not just work stress, there's psychological stress, there's toxins, there's then inflammation in your body. Because if you've been eating um, quite a lot of bad foods, like sugar-laden foods, it can affect your adrenal health because it can wear out your adrenal glands because they're constantly producing cortisol to cope with the, the sugar, to cope with the stress. Um, and then this can increase your inflammation in your body. So inflammation can be a big factor that's creating not just PCOS, but lots of other issues with your, with your hormone symptoms as well. So looking at that, because inflammation, if you've got inflammation in your gut, um, an inflammation because of your adrenal glands are stressed out, then this can create lots of problems as well. So that's another one to, to, to really pay attention to, to look at. Uh, so I hope that's explained it for you and lots of help that you can do. Um, so I would look at how you can reduce your stress levels. Getting outside, because your circadian rhythm is important to get outside in the sunlight. Looking at your food, how can you take out the sugar? 
and I would take out the dairy for sure if you're having problems with your fertility. And the wheat and dairy are a big one because they con they contain, they can increase your um, your insulin growth factor one because of the casein one contained in dairy and milk. So it, 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 it can mess with your hormone health and increase your hormones because if you think about it, if you're eating another animal, you're eating, um, you're drinking the milk from another animal, then they contain hormones too. You know, the, the casein one is a big problematic one for a lot of women, for a lot for your hormone health. Um, so it's taking those out. I would take the wheat out, take the dairy out, look at reducing your sugar. I would take the, you know, can you reduce the sugar intake, your refined sugar, the biscuits, the cakes, things like that. Incorporate some healthier sugars like dates, um, honey, raw honey, things like that. Um, that are healthier sugars for you to eat and you can buy lots of different foods now that contain healthier sugars um, There's lots of um, healthy bars you can make there's the naked bars, you know, they're made with dates They're made with just dates and, and nuts and seeds and uh, So they're natural and you can make your own sweet treats. You can make your own biscuits if you like um, And then you know looking at your, your omega-3 fats um, your, your flax seeds your chai seeds your hemp seeds Doing some seed cycling to help regulate your cycle. In the first part of your cycle, you have your pumpkin seeds, your flax seeds, and the second part of your cycle in your progesterone phase, sesame seeds and sunflower seeds. Um, I've heard of a lot of women having a good successful results doing the seed cycling because they're the different seeds that have different nutrition in to help you know with your zinc levels, with your B vitamins, because they're a really important part. What can really help with your PCOS is what's called myo inositol. Um, and another thing I forgot to mention was your methylation. You know, if it's genetic, if this is genetic, if your family have had this, this it's in your genes. You can you can change your epigenetics. You have you have what's called your genome. Your your genes are fixed for life, and then you have a second layer which is called your epigenetics on your cells. And that can be changed, how that is expressed can be changed. So you don't have to suffer from genetic diseases, genetic illnesses, because you have the second layer on top of your genes and that can be expressed in a different way by your lifestyle, by what you eat, things like that. It can be expressed differently. But look at your methylation. Um, it may be, some, may be a good idea for you to get a test for your methylation. You can have what's called a SNP where you don't pro you don't methylate properly, you may have some folate issues where you don't press us folate very well. So you need B12, B6 and folate for your methylation. So your folate levels can be affected. That can be affecting fertility. This is why I like the Mayo Inositol because it contains, um, I can't remember the make of it. I'll put it in the comments below. This one that you can get which contains the methyl folate because you want the methyl folate, not just the folic acid. And it also contains chromium. And chromium can really help with your insulin resistance and um, it can help sensitize your cells again to um, processing your sugar properly and getting sugar into your cells and reducing this insulin resistance that's created um, when you can't get the sugar into your cells. Um, so yeah, I hope that's helped you out. If you've got any questions at all, please ask me. I'm here to help. Um, thanks for watching my video um, and take care of yourself and I'll see you again in another video soon. Have a lovely rest of your day. See you later.